So guys, welcome to the next stage, and this uh, is known as the PBL workflow, which is the texturing uh, side of modeling. So when I was in university, my uh, tutor said that modeling is only 30% and all the detail comes from texturing. So 30% uh, modeling, 70% it comes in the texturing. So uh, what we can do is I'm going to first explain the PBR workflow and then I'm going to upload several videos uh, with each workflow defining how to do them so you can follow along with all your any of your assets that you're making. So, first question is, by looking at this image, what is the PBR workflow? What do you think it is? And what do you think it stands for? So, what is PBR? So, PBR stands for Physically Based Rendering, which is the concept of using realistic shading and lighting assets along with measured surface values to accurately represent real-world materials. So, essentially, if we look at the final result of the scuba diving gear, um, so this... PBR workflow is made for um, current gen, uh, it's probably going to be used in the beginning of new gen um, consoles where the material, it works heavily for material definition by following the Albedo Metalness Roughness map to get extremely accurate to hyper realistic texture maps. So this also works by, so this works through the use of metal and roughness uh, as well as Albedo. So I'll, be, uh, I'll go through them actually. So Albedo map, which is our first map, is the colour map. So Albedo is the colour input, which uh, which used to be known as the diffuse map. So before there used to be a workflow which was called the diffuse specular gloss. However, this PBR is, more, is new and updated for the new gen. Albedo map defines the colour of light. This measures... This means in the map we want to avoid any source of light within this map and essentially to have it as flattened colours. So when you come to texturing at the albedo map, you don't want to have any sources of light. So for example, if you're uh, texturing a sword, the actual sword part itself, what you want to do is you want to have that as flat metal colours. You don't want any shine. You see this brush metal. So this shine, for instance, you don't want to add any of that into it because that's going to actually go in your metalness map. So if you have it in your albedo, it's a bit difficult to uh, fix later. After that, we have the metalness uh, map. So metalness map is the percentage light uh, surface reflex. It was known as the specular map. So, and black in metalness map means there are uh, non-metal and has no reflection. So, whereas white means it's pure metal. So if we look at this um, image of a gun right here, you can see the places that are metal. So this part in particular, um, this ridge, is metal. So you can see if there's sun, there's light hitting this part, therefore there's a reflection. Whereas this part here, even though the sun is coming from this direction, uh, the plastic isn't getting reflected at all, because obviously plastic isn't a metal. Uh, therefore, it's coloured black in the uh, metalness map. So that's why there's no reflection. So PBR, I uh, forgot to mention, an uh, important aspect of it is essentially you need to work a lot more on your material definition. So just because it might look like... Um, look like it you need to make sure everyone else knows so me you anybody can tell this is plastic just the way of it how it looks and feels if you touch you can assume it'd be rubbery whereas if we would touch this it you know it'd be nice and cold so after that we have the roughness map so the roughness map defines how rough or smooth the surface of the material is uh, and was known as the gloss map Rougher surfaces will show wider but dimmer reflections, while smoother surfaces will show brighter but sharper specular reflections. White is defined as the smoothest surfaces, whilst black is defined as the roughest surfaces. So, uh, as you can see from this uh, description, the whiter something is. So, as we can see, we've got different materials. We're going from plaster to a mirror. So, uh, assuming this is black... Uh, yeah, so this would be black. And what would happen is, as you can see, there's a, it's not as shiny. So, for instance, if we put our... F in real life, if you put your finger uh, on plastic or wood, for instance, there's a uh, you most likely won't see that much 
like of your fingerprints, especially on plaster. However, if you put your fingerprints on steel or a mirror, the second you touch it, like so, um, you'll instantly be able to see your finger marks. So essentially just see as the thing that I will have marks or stains and scratches, etc. Finally, this isn't PBR, but it's essentially uh, a kind of, you want a normal map is integral to texturing. So, excuse me, uh, normal maps can be referred as a newer, better type of normal uh, bump map. A uh, normal map does create the illusion of depth and detail on the surface of a model, but it does it differently than a bump map. A normal map uses RGB information that corresponds directly with the X, Y and Z axis in the 3D space. This RGB information tells the 3D application uh, the exact direction of the surface normals are orientated in each, in for each and every polygon. So that sounded extremely scientific. However, it's quite simple. Essentially, the normal map is an illusion of detail. So, uh, for instance, if we were to make a barrel, uh, a very low poly, uh, poly barrel, say a hundred polygons, uh, and you wanted to add is if you started making each individual plank that would slowly start adding up then if you start added ridges and cracks and you know them holes in each uh, barrel then your 100 polygon barrel will essentially become 1000 or maybe more polygons for example however a normal map what it does is you can texture these details on so if I can texture the planks I can texture the wood grain the metal the scratches and our 100 polygon barrel will have the detail of a 1000 polygon barrel but it'll be efficient for the game because it's taking of course it's going to take less space so essentially it's as you can see in this image um this uh, person has made these dots these holes so instead of actually modeling them in like this boolean hole here you can do it uh, in a in texturing Therefore, you'll save so much more space, po polygon space. Uh, this is important because in the industry, if you ever work in a game design company, you'll always be limited with how many polygons you have. Uh, this used to be a lot more common back in the day. However, the principles still apply. Um, you can't. They don't expect you to have a ten thousand polygon barrel when you can make it a hundred and have the detail of ten thousand polygons in your one hundred polygon barrel yeah so so yeah um the videos after these are um gonna be show each workflow of the pbr um workflow that we're doing and then after the, so first i'll start off in photoshop and then afterwards i'll get into substance painter cool thank you very much for watching and goodbye